the boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, all that wealth, all that beauty ever gave, await each that final hour. The paths of glory lead but to the grave, Charles, to the grave. you are. Well, I've been waiting for you. Was your travel interrupted? Were the roads bad? Surely not, with the weather as fine as we've been having it. Ah, the plague. Yes, travel is interrupted when there is a terrible disease about, isn't it now? Such vexation for that. Well, at least you are here now. I've been waiting for you. Well, let me welcome you to my estate here at Drayborn Park. My warmest salutations to all of you that I have met before and who have had the pleasure and honor of sitting with me under the pavilion taking tea at the festival that we have been at before. I am so very sorry, as I am sure that you are, that you will not be able to sit with me this year and take of the tea and the fine hospitality that I always get and listen to my wise advice and condescension that I give all of those who attend to me. I'm sure you're most disappointed about that. I would be, if I were you. But I see that some of you have not had the privilege nor the honor of meeting me in person or sitting underneath my pavilion at a festival and being able to partake of my marvelous tea and being introduced to me by my man, Rudolph. Well, since Rudolph is not here to introduce you to me today, I must introduce myself to you. I am the Lady Caroline Linnington, the Dowager Baron is Cranston, and I am sitting here in the gardens of my estate, as I do late in the afternoon, and reading poetry to my dear late husband, Lord Cranston, who left me these three years past. I do this in order to be able to improve him somewhat. You see, the Lord Cranston was a member of Parliament, and a great deal of business he had at his hands, and so he never took the time to be able to sit with me and learn the poetry and culture that he should have during our marriage. And so, when he left me three years ago, I was convinced in my mind that I would do everything that I could to enlighten him in those areas in which he was deficient. And so every day I sit and read to him and give him poetry and culture. And I think it has improved him quite a great deal. What an interesting time we are living in now, is it not? These past few months have been most troublesome to those who have nerves who are delicate. I, of course, have no trouble with my nerves, so it has not bothered me at all. In fact, little has changed on my estate. But for those who like to travel, for those who like to visit, for those who like to get about, it has been very troubling. We have been sequestered here on our estates or our manors or our houses with no shopping, no travel, and no visiting between any of us. And that has been most vexing, I know. It has been troublesome for those with delicate nerves. Even with all of those fears, though, I believe that it is the fear of the plague itself any time we were to leave our homes that has put the wrongest constitution under a great deal of stress. Of course, having a house full, full of servants that are at a great deal of fear and anxiety for their life over the plague has taken a great deal of skill and patience in order to keep it running the way it should, which I have done with, I must say, brilliant success. Even my brother-in-law, the Reverend Griswold, has not been able to visit me during all of this. And that I have counted as the one blessing to have come from the plague. However, I have been told that he will be leading the divine service this Sunday morning, so I will not be able to elude him completely. A pity. I, of course, very rarely travel out, but I am visited quite often by callers who wish to come and take advantage of my sensible advice and wisdom. But now that the plague has come and we cannot visit, whom do they have to go to? Who are they going to talk to? They have no one and my heart is very sore for them. What can they do except for to send 
their correspondence to me with their questions and situation. But it takes so much longer for me to be able to answer them and send it back to them. And it is not nearly as generous as it is sitting in my presence and listening to the answers that I give to their questions. I am sure that this is causing great vexation and troubled spirits among them all. However, even with the loss of the face-to-face -face conversation that I know that all of you would desire, and not being able to sit with me under my pavilion there where the shops of Meryton are, where Mrs. Chopra has been so kind as to let me take the most important place over the last few years. Even so, I still remember my responsibility to each of you and am determined to lead you and guide you through this terrible time the very best way that I can. I have not forgotten you. I, for one, believe that there are new opportunities to be had during this period of time when we are at home and alone and apart from one another. This time should be put to good use. Who else do you have that would be more equipped and better designed to lead you through this troubled time and of your growth than myself? No one, I am sure. My first and most profound expectation from all of you is that you have been using this time to better yourselves, to take the advice that I gave you last year and to apply yourself for improvements. I had so hoped to be able to see you this year and to see what improvements you had made on yourself as the ones that I had advised you to do. I am sure that all of you have taken my good advice and improved yourselves greatly in those areas. I clearly remember the last time that we were together, and I remember talking to several of you for improvement in manners of dress and decorum, and hope that you would have done so. This time at home that you have had should surely then be a blessing to you, if you have done as I advised and spent your time wisely on improvements and doing those things which you should be doing to become an accomplished lady, such as have you completed your embroidery? Or on better point, have you started to learn embroidery? What of the pianoforte? Have you been practicing that? I am an accomplished, and I would be more than glad to instruct you were you here with me. But since you are not, you must do that at home. What of your singing voice? Have you been working on that? Do you have a pleasant soft and gentle voice to entertain your guests when they are able to come back and visit you again? And what of the dance? Have you been practicing your dance steps so that when you are out on the floor with your partner, you do not shame him? I certainly hope so. Have you enhanced your communications by practicing your letter writing? From the few letters that I've received, which have been very few indeed, I would say that all of you could use help in that area. Practice your stroke. Practice your writing. A kind letter from a friend is always a welcome advantage anytime you wish to send a communication to someone that you know, or even if you don't know them. If you are not confident of your writing skills, then by all means write your letter and send it first to me. I will go over it and correct it where I see need and then send it back for you, and you may rewrite it and send it to whatever friend you wish, and that way it will be perfect. Now, what of your reading? Have you continued to expand your mind with lofty poetry and informative books? However, do you expect to remain abreast of the world if you do not expand your reading? If you do not have coin to purchase the books that you need for your own library, then I suggest that you contact your lending library and tell them that you require books that Lady Linnington would require you to read. They will know of what you speak. And do not waste your time with romances. That simply will not do. Instead, fill your mind with culture, such as poetry or great literature, things that will touch your soul, not just your heart. Remember, we are whole people and we need to read something that will touch all of us. That is why we've gathered here this weekend, is it not? It's because of our love of the written word and our love of poetry and great literature. All of us, no matter what corner of the world that we come from, 
find our commonality in the written word and in the books that we love to read. And if you do not find yourself in this commonality, this reading of the written word, then pray why even are you here? Your mind must be very closed, and I have nothing that I can do for you to help you. As you spend the next two days with us, I would encourage you to do something for yourself while you are here. Maybe you should listen to a seminar. Maybe you should work on your toilet, something to improve yourself, listening to someone who knows more than you do, like myself. Maybe you should make new acquaintances. Share with them the passion that you have. For after all, that is what draws us all together here, is it not? Is the passion that we have for the written word. And even though we are apart and you are not able to spend time with me in my pavilion, being served a tea by my man Rudolph, I know you're sorely disappointed in that, as am I. Still, while you are home, Fix yourself an excellent tea and sit down and pretend that you are with me under the pavilion being served, and I'm sure that it will refresh your spirit as well as your mind. And most importantly, even though I know that you are cast down and disheartened by the fact that we are not all together on the streets of Meryton, sitting under my pavilion and enjoying the sights and sounds of the festival, do not lose heart. Remember that though we are apart in body, we are together in spirit. And I am convinced that even though we are away from one another now, that by this time next year, we shall all be together again, enjoying the delights of the festival and each other's company as we have done so many times before. And now, as for myself, when we meet again, I shall be expected of you to visit me in my pavilion and bring with you examples or tales of all the improvements that you have made on, it, on yourself from this festival and from the one before. I shall insist that you do that so that I can know that you have spent your time wisely and not foolishly. Bring your books. We shall discuss them. Bring your poetry. I always enjoy hearing that. But come. Come and visit me there. I simply insist upon it and I shall be terribly vexed if you do not. But when you do come, do remember to come just a few at a time. Rudolph gets extremely confused when there are too many names to remember, and he will surely forget to introduce you. So, for his sake, as well as mine, just come a few at a time. And now, may I give you my sincere best wishes for your continued health through this period of time, and that your spirit and your joy will be complete as you spend the next two days with us in the festival. Please, come and visit me again. I bid you good day.